Uh, the only thing harder than doing a Pecha Kucha is being the last presenter before the beer break. But we have one. He is co-founder of 8-Bit Cortex and the research director for Branch Out Neurological Foundation. He's a professional brain health nerd and an innovator. Give a warm welcome to Dr. Kai, Ty McKinney. Thank you. Yeah, so since I am all that's standing between you and the beer break, let's hit the button. All right, so how's everyone enjoying the pachaka cha? All right, so in case the title slide did get it away, I am Dr. Ty, the neuro guy McKinney, and I'm a really big brain nerd. And um, what I'd like to share with you guys tonight is some neuroscience. So to start off with like any good uh, scientist, I wanna start with the statistics. So look around and make eye contact with two people around you. All right. Wait for the slide to change. So according to some data from the Angus Reid Institute, approximately one in three Canadians is struggling with mental health condition. That means that either you or one of the people that you just connected with is currently struggling with a mental health challenge. That's actually quite sad. So if you're struggling with it, you're not alone. But um, the one nice thing, or sorry, um, tonight I'm gonna share with you one of the reasons for uh, that increase in mental health prevalence and talk about the neuroscience of burnout, which I like to think about as work um, that's creating a degradation of your mental health which could ignite a chain reaction inside your brain. So this chain reaction actually starts with a stress hormone cortisol, which typically can be really helpful, especially if you're trying to run away from some bears in the middle of Banff National Park. So cortisol can actually be very helpful in the short term, but the problem actually starts when it starts to creep up a little bit uh, longer. So the one thing about um, uh, our lifestyle is we don't really encounter a lot of bears anymore. Um, instead, we have other things that our brain likes to stress about. Um, in particular, things like taxes, which tend to be a little bit longer term. Um, some might even say that these stressors can be chronic. Um, and this is where things really start to pick up a little bit. So the next phase of the chain reaction starts in a brain network that's really important for attention and focus. And normally, the neurons of this brain network communicate in sync with one another and allow us to um, inhibit distractions uh, inhibit or monitor our impulses and focus on our long-term goals. However, when cortisol starts to sneak into this brain network, um, things start to go a little awry and these neurons start firing outside of sync with one another. And this can lead towards us starting to feeling a bit more scatterbrained and it can give us some difficulty pursuing our long-term goals. And this is where we start to get to the final stage of the chain reaction of burnout. So when uh, we, so that brain network that's really important for attention regulation also helps us out with emotional regulation. So when it starts malfunctioning, we start to get memes like this popping up. And uh, when we have these emotional regulation difficulties, they can actually uh, lead towards the development of uh, feelings of cynicism towards our occupation. If you're a server in a restaurant, this leads to some bad customer service. But if you're a doctor or you're a nurse, this can lead to a reduced quality of healthcare, which is objectively a really bad thing. So up until this point, everything I've talked about is quite literally just a little bit depressing. But I like to be a really happy person, so I thought that we would finish up this presentation on a much more optimistic note. So now that we're aware of some of the neuroscience of burnout, let's use that knowledge to discover some brain hacks that we can use to combat it. And the first one is actually what not to do. So expressive suppression is an emotion regulation strategy where you bottle up your emotions and basically pretend that they don't exist. Basically what Spock does. Uh, this strategy is not particularly effective and the data suggests it can actually stress you out more uh, compared to when you began. So instead what I would recommend, and the data backs this up, is to actually talk about your feelings, be vulnerable, particularly in a safe space, this gives you the ability to process your emotions and the data shows it'll actually help manage your stress over the long term much more effectively. 
So um, can I get a quick show of hands? Who is a business owner in the room or leads a team at work? All right, so that's quite a bit of the room. So you all have an amazing opportunity presented before you because you can impact burnout in your organizations at a systemic level. That's quite the opportunity. Because it turns out that burnout is a function of both the individual and the environment that they're operating within. So um, even if somebody's trying their absolute hardest to manage their burnout, but they're not in a supportive environment, that can undercut their efforts. But on the flip side, if they're able to uh, be in a supportive environment, that can catalyze them right towards success. So a lot of companies typically have a one-size-fits-all set of policies. But what I would challenge you is to think about how you could have personalization. For example, a hybrid work um, policy that is different for introverts versus extroverts, allowing each person to have the conditions that they need to thrive for success. I hope it doesn't come as a surprise to anyone that exercise is really good for your mental health. However, what you might not be aware of is why. So it turns out when you work out, you're actually literally stressing your body out and pumping cortisol into your bloodstream. But the key thing is that eventually your workout stops. And this actually triggers mechanisms within your brain that allow the cortisol to come back down to a baseline level. And the best way to get the, this particular benefit is to bake it into your lifestyle. So find things like a cycle commuting to work, just little bits here and there that allow you to proactively manage burnout. So to quickly summarize, uh, you can start to conceptualize burnout as a chain reaction that begins with chronic stress, that leads towards cognitive difficulty and eventually results in these cynical attitudes. But we can counter them by genuinely expressing our emotions, by making the workplace more supportive, and finding ways to incorporate a little bit of exercise into our routines. And I'm really excited that uh, my startup is actually collaborating with Beakerhead to collect some data about your experience at the event this evening. So I invite everyone to scan this QR code and to share your experience with us. And while you're on our app, check it out and you can get a personalized gamified uh, burnout management strategy. And on that note, thank you so much for listening to me speak. Enjoy the beer.